um, quick look at DataViz. Um, so DataViz you can launch from um, C programs, uh, sorry, program files, grid tools, test data visualizing those are executable, and you can kind of load in CSV files if you want to. Um, it's typically used though from launching within TDM. So if you open up a data source or data target, um, any SQL that you write, um, you can visualize. So if we uh, if we just bring back all of the rows here, and we don't have that many, um, and click this little visualize data button, it will visualize this table for us. Um, so what it what it will do is it will open up three tabs, so a little welcome tab that will explain how you go and do things. So you can just load a CSV, create a new one, and it will give you some options. You can use um, the spot uh, graph, or you can use parallel chords, P chords. Um, and these are the ones that are typically used, so spot graphing I think is probably the most popular. Um, and essentially what you do is you choose your attributes that you're interested in, so you've got to be a bit careful depending on the number of distinct values you've got, but say we choose our job title, we choose our line of business, and it will show us um, essentially where we've got data and where we're missing data. So I've got somebody who's a C1 as their job title rank and their salaried, and if I double click here, it will show me that record. So I've only got one of these. Um, if I go into C3, it will show me how many of these I've got. And again, I've only got one. So they're highlighted as red because we've not got many. Um, you can change the settings under file and settings if you want to change the amounts as to what you actually see or add various color gradients and so on and so forth. Green is good. Green means we've got lots. Um, in this case, 417. So we've got lots of potential rows that meet um, that potential X and Y axes. And here we've got a gap. So um, if I go to my test factory and visualize the missing values, it will show me the missing ones. So I don't have that at the moment. Um, so typically what customers would do is they would pick their interesting attributes that they want to kind of go and check out. So, you know, whatever it is that they're interested in. And slowly this uh, coverage number usually kind of goes down because of lack of data variation and data quality and that sort of stuff. Um, if you do pick something that's got lots of records, it can go a bit kind of crazy in terms of what we've got here. You know, phone numbers, not something you're necessarily that interested in. Um, and so SQL, building up a good SQL query um, with the values and things you're interested in is quite important. Um, under the test factory side of things, there are a few things you can do. So you can filter the data, so you can start to put in some filters in terms of what you're actually looking for. So if you're looking for gradients or you know betweens and that sort of stuff, quite easy to do there. Um, you can load in um, uh, variables or must-have combinations. So um, by exporting this particular view um, and creating this as a little CSV, so this was my travel database, um, what I could do in my travel database, let's actually save that. That'll save a little CSV file. Um, and you can actually load those CSV files back in. So if I just go and reload what I've just exported, essentially. Um, that wasn't the right one. I called it travel. Uh, travel, travel, travel. Um, what that would do is, is that's going to highlight what um, is actually in my CSV file. So potentially things that are missing. So these are must-have combinations that I don't actually have. And okay, you wouldn't you wouldn't export it and then just reload it against itself. Um, but you would do that um, potentially against two different environment sets to see what data is in there. You know, what have I got in my production set? What have I got in my test set? And that sort of stuff. Um, the exporting is actually, I think, more powerful used for uh, firing off data generation routines. Um, when it comes to watching or going through the data generation, you can load in variables from a CSV file. Um, if I just show you what the, that CSV file that I just exported looks like, um, it's, uh, did I call it travel? God, my memory is terrible. Yes, travel CSV. Um, it's essentially all of the things that, that we've got. Or if you put it to inverse, so what's missing, it will export all the missing. So you can use the missing ones to essentially use this to drive those columns in the database to go and populate the data that needs to be in there. So it will give you what we'd refer to as full coverage um, in terms of the actual data because you'll get every combination, every different type of things that are currently missing. Um, so when it gets to data generation, we'll get into that. Um, the, other, the other tab that's open is parallel chords. So parallel chords is really um, good for showing where data is kind of um, how it's kind of flowing through the system and the various uh, joins that we've got there. So, for example, we can see that 
by by thickness of um, record. So this is kind of quite a thick one, it's quite thin, and we've got no links down to C1 here. Um, all of the stuff that we're looking at at the moment is going through to C3. And again, we can pick in various things that we're interested in to try and understand data flows and that sort of stuff. Um, you've got to, sometimes I'll say with Data Visualizer, these screens may not show up in here, um, and that's typically down to, if you're on a virtual machine that doesn't have a good or a graphics card, sometimes this doesn't show. Um, and the, the actual things that you are, the data attributes are the key things here. We, we typically wouldn't bring in a first name or a last name um, because in, from a testing perspective, people often don't care um, that, you know, and if you need to find somebody with a specific name, it's just as easy to go and do it with SQL. But, you know, data spreads where we've got certain job titles, line of businesses, nationalities, designations, that sort of stuff can be quite interesting. Um, so, uh, anything else that's kind of interesting, um, I would, I'd, from my experience going in and using this and, and talking customers through it, don't really go any further than that. Um, there is more that you can do in here. Um, test matching used to be involved, so you could go and reserve that row. You can export these into Agile Designer to start modeling data trends. You can export to CSV or this particular piece of test data to Rally, as long as you've got URLs and authentication keys. Um, I can't say I've tested this functionality, so uh, if you've got a Rally instance, please give that a try. You should essentially uh, locate that piece of data against um, the, the place in Agile Central. You can export it just into a CSV file. So again, this could be my data. Um, and I'm pretty sure, hang on, uh, yeah, fine, sorry, I thought there was a spelling mistake in there, no. Um, so if I come into now my travel section, I've got my data, and that's just kind of the record that people can kind of go and, go and use and consume, and so on and so forth. So um, it's got, the, it's, Really, kind of an insight tool way of kind of showing what you what you're working with, what you've got, where you've got a lot of data, um, and just gives you a very quick look up in terms of what's going on. Has a very high resonation with the customers. Um, I think because it, it's pretty it's pretty understandable what it's doing and how it works. Um, there are a few different graph types, so you can do it through kind of data tables. You can do it via radial coverage and other things. So feel free to have a play with these. I typically find spot graphs and pcords the the two more interesting or the the two that kind of make the most sense um hopefully you found this useful i'll come back to data viz when it comes to data generation and some of the more advanced things we do with data generation to show how we can fill some of those gaps um, but for the moment that's kind of a, a quick walkthrough